welcome to The Road Not Taken, discussions with assorted professionals with a background in mathematics. I'm your host, Eder Kikianti. And I'm your host, Rory Biggs. We have a very special guest today joining us for another fun discussion, Professor Hendra Gunawan from Indonesia. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, so in, in Indonesian, we use honorific pa, like sir, uh, when we address an older gentleman. So I, uh, as an Indonesian, speaking to another Indonesian, I will address our guest today with this, uh, with this honorific. So I will call him Pak Hendra throughout. Please don't get confused. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pak Hendra is a professor of mathematics in Bandung Institute of Technology. I studied there for my undergraduate. He was my lecturer for all my calculus courses, calculus one, two, and multivariable calculus. And he also supervised me for my honors uh, project. So his research is mainly in functional analysis. And in the addition to his teaching and research at the university, uh, Pak Hendra is dedicating himself to mathematics and education in Indonesia through his writing uh, in various media, like newspaper articles, blogs, and books on mathematics. And most recently, he is very active on his YouTube channel. Oh, okay. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can learn a thing or two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, Bahendra, could you perhaps tell us about your mathematical journey? Where did you study? Why did you choose mathematics? And why did you decide to work as a mathematician? Okay, thanks, Ider. And hi, Rory. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Um, Likewise. I think I will start the story from my uh, childhood. My parents said I was quite good at maths from primary school up to high school. So after I finished high school, I applied for an admission to mathematics department at Bandung Institute of Technology, or we call it uh, ITB, ITB, through a so-called um, pilot project in 1992. By this pilot project, I didn't have to take entrance test. So they uh, selected students from high schools who had uh, yeah quite good marks or grades in certain subjects. So I was selected and uh, admitted at ITB through this uh, project. But uh, at that time, I couldn't pick sophisticated programs like electrical engineering or industrial engineering. They offer it only for certain um, programs like mathematics, physics, uh -huh. chemistry, basic sciences. So because I like mathematics, then I went for it. So I studied at ITB for five years. At that time, the program was four and a half years, either oh. only four years because the program changed from time to time. Now it becomes shorter. <laughs> so at that time, the, the undergraduate curriculum was uh, designed for four and a half years because we were influenced by Dutch uh, system before. It was actually longer uh, during 1950s, 60s. I was enrolled at ITB in uh, 1982. At the time, the curriculum was uh, designed for four and a half years. But I missed one semester. <laughs> I mean, I not missed, but uh, I, I like be, being uh, um, university students. So I spent five years and finished uh, in 1987. And finishing uh, my undergrad uh, studies, I decided right away that I would like to become a lecturer. So I applied for a position and it was possible at the time uh, that for people with undergrad uh, degree uh, to apply for uh, the um, academic uh, position. So I, I applied and I was admitted um, 1987. And uh, of course, I, I didn't uh, teach a class right away. I, I was prepared to be uh, sent abroad. Uh, so 
I took an English uh, course to prepare my uh, further study. I went to Australia in 1988. So just one year after I was uh, admitted to uh, the Department of Mathematics. So I went to the University of New South Wales in Sydney. Uh, I started a program. It, it was master leading to PhD program. So that means I was enrolled as a master student. But if they think that I'm good enough, then they will allow me to pass to the doctoral program uh-huh. without writing a master thesis. So the first year in Sydney, uh, I studied hard. And at the end of my first year there, I wrote something and showed it to my supervisor. Uh, my supervisor was uh, Professor Michael Cowling. Well, actually what I showed to him was my uh, failure. <laughs> I mean, I did some some uh, some research on something, but I I couldn't uh, get the positive result. But I solved it anyway and told him that this was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but but the problem came from him. So so he he took the responsibility uh, as well. I I believe so. So he told me something like this, uh, okay, so we couldn't get a result for this uh, problem. Uh, so I will propose you to, to be a, a doctoral student. What? I said. <laughs> 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 so that was uh, quite, uh, quite uh, memorable, of course. I mean, I was... I was uh, transferred to PhD uh, program through my failure. <laughs> uh, but I mean, because of that, I think Michael Cowling uh, saw my uh, ability uh, that something is impossible should be impossible. So, uh, uh, but then, yeah, I spent two and a half more years to, to do my uh, doctoral research. So I studied uh, a different, but not quite different uh, problem, but uh, still related. So actually my research area, not just uh, functional analysis, my first uh, research area was uh, Fourier analysis, yeah, Fourier an- or harmonic analysis. I got my PhD degree. Uh, well, I submitted my PhD thesis at the end of um, 1991. But in the in Australia, my thesis uh, was uh, either thesis also I think uh, was uh, then evaluated by three referees. One of them is my uh, supervisor. So uh, and at least one from outside Australia. So and I got the result like in uh, mid 1992. So I was uh, supposed to be graduated in 1992. To October, October 1992. I said I was supposed because I didn't go there. I was already uh, back, back in, in Indonesia mm-hmm. uh, early uh-huh. uh, or end of 91 or early 1992. Mm-hmm. I already back. Uh, I already went back to Indonesia and I didn't go back to Australia just for my uh, graduation. So I, I. I just uh, got the notice. Then uh, later on, the university sent me the uh, certificate, uh, which uh, stated that I, I got uh, the degree. So 1992, from then on, I started uh, teaching. I taught a lot <laughs> uh, as a young uh, doctor just got my degree. The head of the department uh, was really happy. Oh, Hendra, you come back. Come on, uh, teach uh, <laughs> this and that and so on. Um, at, because at that time, many of my colleagues uh, were still uh, abroad also for their uh, postgrad. 
I was one among maybe three or four uh, new newly graduated from. I'm from Australia. My colleagues from the states, and maybe um, I think more from the states than from mm. Australia. Yeah, I still try to uh, do research, writing one paper a year at that time, and then at sometimes I was really busy uh, teaching and also doing administrative uh, <laughs> administrative yeah. work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like like you do also now, perhaps. <laughs> uh, we can so <laughs> uh, my 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 publications was not so many at the time, 1994, uh, but I was lucky I got, I applied for the travel grant to attend the International Congress of Mathematicians, ICM, hmm. in Zurich, 1994. I went there in 1998. I went to Berlin also. And between those years, I also went back to UNSW once or maybe twice, uh, did more research with Michael Cowling and some uh, mathematician from uh, Spain, uh, Garcia Cuerva. So uh, I visited also several universities in Europe, like the Netherlands, Sweden, and Spain, and participated in many conferences mm -hmm. elsewhere. In 2000, I got a fellowship to do research in Australia. Again, this fellowship from the Australian government, it was a competitive uh, fellowship. I mean, they only gave this every year for only two scholars. So to apply for this uh, fellowship uh, for mathematics, the, the chance was really little. Actually, I, I had to compete mm -hmm. with people from other uh, disciplines. Uh, and what I'm doing in math was also theoretical, so my chance was really small at that time, <laughs> but uh, I got it, the interview and, and uh, finally I got the uh, fellowship. So the, the money was good. <laughs> I uh -huh. spent one year again in Australia. At that time, I was married already and my wife and my little boy uh, came with me also. So from 2000 something, 2003, I uh, met mathematicians from Japan and then I started to collaborate also with them. This collaboration, I think, was fruitful and so I continued to, to work and know more uh, mathematicians from Japan up to now. So if you look at my publications, many uh, papers were written with my Japanese uh, collaborators. So actually in 2000, I started to do uh, research in functional analysis. So when either studied at ITB, I was at the time already had some, uh, I had I ha had already some publications in, in uh, functional analysis and I gave her also a topic in, uh, the subject angle between subspaces and later on some aspects, some geometrical aspects of n norm spaces. So I guess that's about uh, my mathematical journey. Sorry if it's mm -hmm. a bit too long. <laughs> I love the part of uh, having uh, reached a dead end sort of uh, when you started your MSc. I think this is something that sometimes uh, people who are aspiring to become mathematicians, thank you. You start something and it all works out, but like it is so often that you reach a dead end and so often that you can that's learn true. something that's true. That's from true. reaching that dead end. Yeah. 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 Coming back to when I was studying at ITB, ITB, I must say that you you were a big influence by Hendra for, for, for me because um, we... Glad to hear oh. that. <laughs> Well, I did uh, three calculus courses with you. I was your TA for, for a few years and then uh, uh, did my uh, honors project with you. And I remember you you gave um, some some advice, um, two that I always remember and, and one probably uh, related to what, what you mentioned earlier. Uh, one, you said, keep pushing forward. Um, and second, you say, don't be afraid to make mistakes. So hearing the story of your uh, master to 
promotion of, of becoming a doc- doctoral student, I think it's a uh, probably stem from this in some sense. <laughs> you famously <laughs> you famously said uh, that learning mathematics required three things, paper, pencil, and rubbish bin. Um, this is what you always say. <laughs> so uh, could you perhaps elaborate more in, in your experience as a lecturer when you see students uh, making mistakes and learning yeah, from them? Yeah. Um, maybe this can be a useful thing. Yes, yes. But uh, I'm, I must admit that that phrase or that sentence uh, was not originally mine. I, I read it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I read it somewhere. But uh, because I experienced that, although what happened during my master uh, studies was not really mistakes, but a dead end, like Rory mm. uh, say. Mm-hmm. But it, it is similar, right? You often uh, make mistakes. You often also find dead ends. From these two, you learn something. You've been uh, going through the wrong way, right? Mm-hmm. So I think if we r- remember how we learn things from little, we, we learn a lot by experiencing right we we learn that fire is hot by touching the light of a candle for example <laughs> trial we and learn, error <laughs> we learn that knife is sharp uh, not just being told that knife is sharp but because we play with it and then cut ourselves okay <laughs> so when we learn math i think we we make uh, many things including mistakes we make wrong calculation, wrong manipulation, like solving one over x less than one over two, and then we do the cross multiplication, and then oh, uh, uh, I'm teaching first year calculus yeah, yeah. right now. They doing this right now, <laughs> and then we we check we check ah uh, why we why we only got a partial answer, yeah. So, but then. Maybe our senior or our teacher told us, uh, uh, you did it wrong and so on and so on. So sometimes we, we make mistakes and then we, we are told by, by some other people or we are uh, aware of these mistakes that we made and then we, we correct them. So, so that's how we, we, we learn, I mean, mm-hmm. from mistakes and also from uh, dead ends. But I don't really remember how how many mistakes I have made. But now, from a lecturer point of view, because I've been uh, teaching like uh, thirty three years now, um, or maybe thirty years, because I, the first three years I was in Australia, Australia for my uh, master and PhD studies. So when we supervise our students. We read their report. We usually <laughs> encounter a lot of mistakes, right? So <laughs> we we told them that's not correct, and then we we ask them to to uh, correct them. As a more experienced lecturer, I know when my student makes mistakes. Mm. It is good if they know when they make mistakes, actually. Yeah. But I mean, knowing. When we are right is something, but knowing knowing when we are wrong is another thing. Yeah. And I think it takes time to arrive to mm. this uh, credential. Knowing yeah. when you are doing mm-hmm. wrong, wrong, yeah, yeah. is 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 uh, it takes time to to yes. mm. and and uh, supervisors like uh, perhaps either also has supervised uh, students. Supervisors uh, have more. Uh, experience, of course. So experiencing in in getting the right results and wrong results are important. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now I would like to tell you also another story. I'm learning an FPV uh-huh. drone. Yeah. 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 First person uh, view. So uh-huh. through your goggles or your okay. uh, gadget, right? So I can fly 
GPS drone easily because mm -hmm. it it was it is assisted by the Where? firmware and also mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. But there is another type of drone called FPV drone, which is not assisted by uh, GPS. Mm -hmm. So the expert in this uh, drone always uh, say, try with simulators first. Why is that? Well, with simulators, you make mistakes, it's uh, free. I mean, <laughs> so, so, yeah. So after, after some 20 hours, I, so I did, I did uh, learn with uh, true, true simulator. Yeah. So after some 20 hours, I tried the real, the real drone, the real uh, quad. So I make, I'm, I still crash the, the drone. <laughs> and learning from now nowadays learning from youtube from mm -hmm. people who are also flying the drones and they they fly really well and they they often uh also make uh review videos and also uh give advice to uh noobs or beginners like me and they their advice is the same i mean just uh first of course Try with simulators, and then when you fly with the real quad, don't be afraid of crashing. Yeah, you will you will crash not just <laughs> once, not just once, <laughs> ten times, yeah. and be ready to buy another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in in real life, of course, there are some mistakes which should be avoided. Mm. Doctors should should be careful, right? Mm. Yeah. Pilots should be careful, and yeah. there are many also because uh, because of that they pilots try with simulators maybe not just twenty hours, yeah, yeah. maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, one year maybe I don't know I don't know uh, but but pilots uh, flying the real airplane yeah. not drones <laughs> are serious uh, mm. so. But in, in mathematics, mistakes are free. So rubbish bin is just the cost and pencil <laughs> and paper. <laughs> and paper, yeah. Yes, and I uh, quite also, I like the analogy of we can be told that the fire is hot, mm. but you, you sort of have to burn yourself at least one to really learn Experience it, yeah. that yeah. what's going yeah. on. And I, I feel sometimes uh, we have to be uh, careful to give our students enough space yes, yes. to actually go and make those mm. mistakes so that mm. they're not so fearful as, as we are yeah. explaining now. Yeah. That, yeah. well, it's fine. You have to go and burn yourself at least once or twice yeah. to learn yeah. that particular pitfall. Yeah. yeah. I remember one yeah. in one tutorial, I did uh, multivariable calculus. And a, a, a girl in my class, she, she's doing some exercise and she's calculating second order partial derivatives of this function. And then she found that the derivative with respect to x and then y and she calculated y and x and she didn't get mm -hmm. the same answer the functions everything's continuous right. the old polynomials mm -hmm. and she she looked very perplexed and i happened to walk by uh, in the tutorial room and i said are you okay and she said something's not right she said everything's continuous ah. so the, i should get the same answer i must have made a mistake ah. and i thought for usually second year students don't point the, didn't those realize of, uh, that, yeah. yeah i didn't realize these kind of mistakes mm -hmm. so i was uh -huh. applauding her and i said that is wonderful it's fine to make mistakes but you are on the right track you made mistake you made a mistake and, you and then you realize you, you realize, realize that you made a mistake so i think uh -huh. that she was on a good track as you said rory having the space for them to yeah, yeah. realize these these things yeah yeah, hmm. yeah so right. this this advice i give quite often actually to the students whom i supervise to get correct results is one thing and to get wrong results is another thing but when you you get things wrong you should look and be suspicious i mean when perhaps i should put it this way when you get something strange i mean yeah. some strange results you should be suspicious and it is a good a good uh, exercise uh, or uh, like either either just said when you are able to see that you are doing wrong then you are learning mm -hmm. then you are uh, then you you have built something 
uh, something important. Mm. To be able to 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 realize that something is wrong is is mm. a good a good uh, ability. Yeah, and uh, and it can become almost instinctual in a way for me. Sometimes I look at something I can't tell you what's wrong, but I know something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It that happens takes quite, time quite. To, yeah, to analyze carefully. Well, yeah. where exactly is that problem coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. That's true. And especially yeah. in mathematics, right? Uh, I, yeah. I, I did a lot of uh, problems. I attack a lot of problems, and usually I. I like beautiful results. I mean, mm-hmm. there are many, many mathematical problems which can be solved, but the results are like messy or, or I mean, the formula and so on, uh, calculations uh, too, uh, too messy. And yeah, I prefer to, to do problems which uh, at the end, I found the beauty. Of course, we don't get right away a uh, simple uh, reasoning and so on. But but at the end, ah, yes. like it's like nah. straightforward at the end. But but of course, it's <laughs> not the case uh, at, from the beginning. But yeah. at oh, the yes. end, it was it was uh, yeah. like obvious. And when I encounter uh, to complicated calculations or reasoning and things like that, then I sometimes tell myself, this could be a wrong way to attack the problem. I mean, I got the result, but this could be a wrong way to attack the problem. Mm-hmm. Although yeah. although some problems are like that, but but mm-hmm. I always remind myself if, if it's too complicated, also to my students, if the argument's too complicated, uh, could you find a better argument or something like that? So, yeah. so No, I mean, this reminds me of, I think it was during my MSc, I had a theorem that took me, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 pages to prove. And it, it was very messy. It, it had to sort of branch off into 32 subcases and close each one uh-huh. of them off. And it was incredibly unsatisfying. Yeah. But now, having gone through that experience, I've got better and I've been able to develop techniques that I can ex- get to the same result in one page with beautiful yeah, reasoning yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. very convincing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What we just discussed is talking about uh, what actually mathematicians do, right? We keep uh, mm-hmm. we keep playing around with, with, with the objects, we keep uh, pushing forward, trying to find better arguments and um, or... Yeah, we'll keep asking questions um, and mm-hmm, keep doing mm-hmm. mathematics. And mm-hmm. uh, this is what we always ask: What is a mathematician? A mathematician is someone mm-hmm. who, who does mathematics. Although you can you can make it circular, right? What is mathematics? And the mathematics mm-hmm. is what mathematician do. So then yeah. it becomes circular. <laughs> but um, that's one of the topics in my math chat. <laughs> yes, yes. But let, let's not talk about that second part. <laughs> so I just want to talk about mathematicians doing mathematics. So, but Henry, you have a, a blog, um, which I think also some of the blog posts um, have been reposted, so to say, as uh, YouTube videos. Uh, your blog is called bermatematika.com. So, uh, mm-hmm. in matematika in Indonesian is, well, obviously, mathematics. It sounds quite obvious. Um, and we usually put the prefix ber, in front of a noun to make it a verb. So, uh, kerja is work, but kerja is working or or doing work. So, I quite like this uh, name, bermatematika, because it, it mm. makes it this action of doing mathematics. Yeah. I don't think in Indonesian we often say, well, what are you doing? I'm, you know, bermatematika. Like, no one actually <laughs> say these things in Indonesia. Uh, so, I think this is a very nice word. Um, so, could you maybe talk about why did you decide to start uh, the blog and uh-huh. uh, the evolution of the blog, the viewership? Yeah. Or... yeah. Yeah. First, I must admit that that word maybe was not originally mine. Also, so <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but this word uh, have been around for like uh, maybe ten to twenty years. Uh, but mathematica and and a few or maybe many people now use this this word uh, to to mean uh, doing mathematics. Mm. Um, uh, the blog is not my first blog, right? My first blog anakbertanya.com, uh, but that was not 
actually the first also <laughs> <laughs> i have created i have created uh, many blogs at hgunawanwordpress.com it's still there oh yes uh, i remember that one <laughs> yeah yeah it's still there so uh, but you are you ask you're asking me about bermathematica.com which was quite interesting actually the the story about it so in uh, 2016 i think i started this blog um at that time i was uh surfing the words uh, mathematics and indonesia two words okay so what i found i found pages or websites on what do you call that uh bimbingan belajar um, uh, it's like uh, t- tutoring service yeah tutoring yeah. service uh-huh. uh not for free <laughs> this is okay. typically for entrance exam um yes if, yeah, and, but yeah. now also for uh for final things. exams yeah. uh, at, at uh, high school and so on yeah okay so i um uh, i complained uh and i wrote on my uh, facebook i didn't remember what i wrote but uh, <laughs> basically i i complained and a colleague from chemistry department well you're a mathematician why don't you uh create a blog of your standard something like that mm. uh, or a blog that that is supposed to to show what mathematics is and so on mm. and i said yes why <laughs> why not <laughs> so right away that day So it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. So by four o'clock, I created the blog <laughs> with my first article. So I created the the blog and I made a commitment to myself that I will write uh, at least one article per week. Wow! Actually, from the uh, in the first few months, I I wrote more than one articles per week, but now another story of course i mean up to <laughs> up to before before the pandemic i i was still uh, writing uh, mm. articles but then uh, somehow i was uh, to to involve with the online teaching and so on i i had to record my lectures and so on so i i i turned to to my youtube channel so yeah so in bermathematica.com i wrote short articles about anything which i thought uh important for the students and teachers to know about mathematics so uh from like simple inequality uh, uh Bernoulli inequality, something like that, uh, mm-hmm. or uh, arithmetic mean. Um, what do you call that? Arithmetic, uh, arithmetic geometric, mean, geometric mean inequality, inequality, something like that. Yeah, and also about, for example, uh, circles, the properties of uh, some numbers like uh, perfect numbers, yeah. uh, prime numbers, and so on many many articles you can yeah. check and from that uh, blog i collect the uh, articles and then compose them into books um, yeah so i've written uh, three books one about circle uh, circle i don't have that one and then <laughs> uh, and then the one. infinity and the infinity uh, yeah and the last one just a collection of of articles which i cannot make a good title of so <laughs> i just call uh, bermathematica not only uh, computing or something like that in yeah. english maybe yeah yes. doing math is not it's, it's just not, not, computing. not just computing yeah <laughs> yeah are you planning to write more books uh, <laughs> i would love to but last year i have already uh uh written a book on my um research uh 
topic. Oh, okay. So I, I wrote a book. It was sort of a diary of my research journey. Mm. So, so in this book, I wrote paper to paper. So from my first paper, including my first uh, undergraduate uh, project mm. to my uh, uh, doctoral uh, thesis. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, my first paper and so on uh, up to maybe 2019. Yeah, this book was published last year, last year, hmm. 2020. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I was um, thinking about this the other day, um, and I, I believe we had this conversation before. One of your motivation of writing um, books, and you, you wrote these books in, in Indonesian, um, mm -hmm. in, intentionally, and I think this yes. is because we do not have, so to say, recreational mathematics books in Indonesian. Uh, in English, there are many of these things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, famously, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Ian Stewart, he's, he has many books yeah. um, on recreational mm -hmm. mathematics. Simon Singh is another person um, that, that's writing a lot. And, um, but you, you were highly motivated um, mm -hmm. on, on writing these books because they're, they're in Indonesian for the Indonesian um, so it's yeah, public. It was related to the 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 blog Brematematica.com, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So my intention was really to to introduce uh, what mathematics is, uh, mm. not through the definition, but yeah, but not by defining defining what mathematics is in in mm. one paragraph or one uh, sentence, but by by showing uh, different. Uh, uh, aspects of mathematics and the books in science in general these books are called uh, popular popular, popular science so yeah. so what i wrote are popular mathematics yeah. so yeah. it's mathematics it's serious mathematics but it 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 is uh, written in in popular language in popular mm -hmm. language so that i can reach uh, more more people not just people already doing mathematics okay yeah. so the intention is to reach uh, uh, students teachers and maybe maybe people who who perhaps they've heard about the word mathematics and perhaps they've of course they have learned mathematics from from schools at least actually they like mathematics perhaps and then but then they didn't get the chance to study maths further yeah. and then when they they see these books then they are attracted to to read so mm -hmm. that's uh one of the uh, uh aim also yeah. of writing this book so it's called popular popular, popular mathematics, mathematics. Yeah. It's, it's more more uh correct i think Yes, um, I'm, I'm now learning from my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> because because rec recreational mathematics is like a magic square and then yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, puzzles and so on. Yes, that's, that's yes. Recreational mathematics. mathematics. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I'm curious, uh, what has the, the response been? Have you... Uh, to this blog, oh, and to these books. Okay, uh, thank you, you for asking. Tell a story or two on that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for asking this. My first book, my first popular math book, was published in 2015. I didn't try to publish it uh, with my university. Mm -hmm. I contacted publisher outside, uh, but this publisher. This publisher uh, published uh, books on science, on religion, on uh, many, many subjects, right? So I sent my script uh, to them and they agreed to publish it, but they changed the title. <laughs> <laughs> they, changed, they changed the title. You know what? Uh, the title in the first place was like... Uh, the ghost, the of, ghost of, of circles circle. or something yeah. like that. <laughs> I use the, the word ghost uh, because uh, from my uh, experience, mathematics is like ghost, actually. <laughs> we can talk about that uh, some other time. Yeah. Anyway, this book was quite a success, actually. I think the publisher got quite 
revenues from this book. But poor me, because it was my first book published with a commercial publisher or private publisher. They call it, uh, in Indonesia, we, uh, we have royalty system, of course. Mm -hmm. But there is another system which they sort of buying my book and they yeah. pay me once and for all. Yes. So it they take the risk. I take I take my risk also. Okay. If if the book was not successful, I got my money already. Yeah. Uh, but it if it's really uh, you know uh, uh, successful, then the the publisher get the the yes. benefit. So and we bought the only, rights, kind of. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they buy, mm -hmm. they buy the co copyright, something like yeah, that, right? Yeah. So they they don't pay me royalty anymore. Mm. Okay. Early this week, the publisher contacted me. Uh, hey, Hendra, do you want to buy your books? <laughs> <laughs> so I have to buy to buy my books, right? As an author, of course, yeah. half price, <laughs> half price. And this is 2021, right? So they have reprinted, reprinted wow. the book for like four or five times. So mm. every time they reprint, they always contact the authors, mm -hmm. whether or not the authors also want to buy. Mm. Mm -hmm. So uh, recently, I, I decided to buy like 25 books mm -hmm. for half, half, half price, right? So mm. usually I... I I give to my, uh, you know, uh, you well, know, there, there are people whom I can give the books away. So I can also sell the books. Of course, I, I put uh, the advertisement in my blog and so on, but not for profit. So I, I, I sell the books also uh, lower than the publisher's uh, mm. price. But of course, mm. uh, they have to pay the... Uh, on cost kirim, uh, the uh, uh, shipping fee. Sh ah. shipping, shipping fee. Shipping yeah. fee. Yeah, shipping fee. Yeah. So oh, it's that sounds like you've uh, reached but quite the a lot second, of the second and the third book, which either uh, hold uh, at the moment, was published were published uh, through my university, my yeah, university publisher. Best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With the with the private publisher, the contract will be finished next year seven oh. years seven yeah. years uh, agreement mm. so okay. after that i can publish with another publisher mm -hmm. or renew renew the contract right. Uh -huh. right if i renew the contract maybe i get uh money again <laughs> <laughs> and i will raise the bar you know <laughs> That is great. Yeah, you have another blog, uh, anakbertanya.com. So the blog title mm -hmm. in Indonesian is Anak Bertanya Pakar Menjawab, mm -hmm. which is roughly translated to Expert Answers Children's Questions. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, this is a very successful educational blog uh, in Indonesia. Um, we want to hear perhaps a little bit more about mm -hmm. the blog. How did it start? <laughs> when did it start to gain a big following? Uh, there's mm. festival attached to this, so well, not during yeah. the pandemic, but yeah. um, you had a big team, and yeah, what wonderful things have you achieved with this uh, project? Yeah, yeah, the blog was uh, created before the Bermatematika dot com, or not dot com. Sorry, I did I say dot com? It was dot net. Dot net. <laughs> Bermatematika dot net, net yeah. <laughs> blog because dot uh, com was Another blog belong to Pak Bara. Bara yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, another, another, <laughs> another, uh, another colleague. Yeah, a colleague yeah. At, at my department. Yeah. Uh, okay, anakbertanya.com created like in 2013. The motivation at that time was to introduce not only science, not only mathematics, all uh, kind of knowledge, including um, sports, music, uh, cultures, professions, any any profession, uh, to to the children. 
why did I feel the urge to do that? Because you know the curriculum of uh, primary school and high school uh, in Indonesia uh, are determined by government. Okay. Um, and from time to time, the ministers change and so on. Um, the curriculum is also changed, but I don't see it's getting better. It's just like, you know, uh, yep. making package. Yeah. <laughs> and in 2013, actually, I felt that the direction was wrong. I mean, I mean, it's not like going forward, but it was like going backward. Yes. So I, I, I feel the urge to to introduce uh, science, technology, math, but of course not only STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, but also uh, any prof profession in the modern world. Hmm. I was thinking about 2045. 2045 became a, a, a year which was discussed by politicians and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, presidential uh, hour candidate and yeah. so on. Uh -huh. yeah. we, they thought that we had golden opportunity we have a golden uh, generation and so on and so on 2045 indonesia will become a great country and so on and so on but i don't see it mm -hmm. i cannot see it i cannot see the light at mm -hmm. the end of the tunnel yeah, yeah. so uh i must contribute something mm. uh, but i'm at the university and i know the primary school are important Mm. How could, how could I do that? I I see that the internet is a mean. I mean, a website mm. is a means to to influence to influence the uh, student um, orientation or student view, student uh, dreams. I I would like the children to have. Uh, big dreams to become someone who are needed in uh, the future. Mm -hmm. So that's the motivation. So I created the the blog. I let the let the children ask anything. Mm. Let them ask anything. So I have a friend, and he has uh, eight to nine uh, places in Indonesia. Uh, which uh, house houses uh, children? Uh, maybe you know this uh, sauce children villages. So my friend mm -hmm. uh, was the, the country director of this, uh, and and of course uh, I can ask him to collect the questions from from the children. Uh, so I got like nine hundred questions. Uh, from these uh, villages and I started to pick one by one and look for my colleagues to answer the question. So the hmm. questions could be about mathematics, physics, anything. Why doesn't the moon fall to the earth? Uh, why is religion important? Hmm. Why people pain? why we sing a song and something like that. I mean, um, all kinds of questions. And I ask if about why doesn't the moon fall to the earth? Of course, I ask my physicist uh, colleague to answer the questions or people from astronomy department. But uh, if uh, the question was about painting, I ask my artist uh, friend. <laughs> And so on and so on. So I I uh, put the answer on the blog, 
And up to now, maybe there are hundreds uh, questions have been answered already. But now it's a bit slowing down, not just a bit, but uh, it's much slowing down uh, because of this uh, pandemic. And but it's still, uh, if 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 there is a, a colleague who want to answer, I I I, I publish the answer. But from that blog, I I have so many books. Uh, uh, wow. These are collections. <laughs> collections uh of answers to to the questions and yes and i'm now remembering reading books like this when i was a kid and it was so fascinating and inspiring yeah yeah, yeah. and what is important also is to to write the cv of the people who answered yeah, the questions yeah. because mm. this is the intention of of the of the blog it's not q and a <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's not Q&A, but I want to introduce three things. First is the knowledge. Two, the profession re- uh, related to the knowledge. And three, the, the people uh, the, the people who can be their role models. Yeah. I want yes. to be like Rory. I want to be like <laughs> either, for example. Uh, uh, I mean, it is important for children to have to have role models. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's what happens to, for example, uh, who who are inspired by Einstein, uh, Carl Sagan, perhaps. Mm. Uh, yeah, many scientists uh, become great scientists. And uh, if you uh, read the story, it, it is quite often that they were inspired when yeah. they were little by someone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, great yeah yeah anyway from the book i also made the the picture book <laughs> picture book yes <laughs> fantastic and this one who is who is einstein yeah <laughs> <laughs> really. yeah 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 so this this wow. is to reach uh, to reach younger younger children yes I got a I got a package from you a few years ago um, that I gave oh, to my really? niece and nephew. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. So my niece got the the other set for the older mm-hmm. kid, right? And then my nephew yeah. got the got the younger package. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This, yes. uh, it's it's really wonderful. They makes they really happy. enjoy the books. Makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they really enjoy the books. We can talk for hours. <laughs> Sorry, I so talk. I, I talk too long. <laughs> no, no. it's so interesting. We're so happy. <laughs> yes, you are so productive in this. <laughs> no, this in these projects, incredibly yeah. inspiring. I'm sorry about yes. my rusted English. I no, no problem. No, I haven't no, spoken no. English for many months. <laughs> Let's perhaps try to um, segue to your YouTube channel, which is currently. Mm. All, okay. All, all the actions are, I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you've started your YouTube channel. You already mentioned earlier. Uh, let's say this is uh, mainly because we're, we've been doing a lot of online content uh, for our for our students. Um, well, we started this series, Road Not Taken, also because we've been on on you know <laughs> on this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Digital life for 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 yeah. a long time. So we thought, oh, let's let's do something productive and and start this series. Yes. So I, I believe you also do the same thing. So what's the, what are the actions? What was sort of the um the the main event uh, that you're you're hosting now on your YouTube channel? Yeah, um, of course you've mentioned one of the contents of my YouTube channel, which is uh called Mad Chat. Yeah. But let me tell when was my YouTube channel becoming more active, right? Because right, it was right. created it was created in 2013, but I only only put like one or two videos and then mm. I left them for several years. Yeah. Because at that time I chose uh, blogs and books. But then after this pandemic came uh, last year, we as teachers are urged to to teach uh, online and use uh, videos mm-hmm. uh, as as um, media for the asynchronous asynchronous session. Yeah. So when okay. when the students learn by themselves yes. through 
through the videos that we put uh, online. And then we also have uh, sessions, synchronous sessions, where we meet the students through through media like this. So I started to produce uh, videos because uh, the department also chose me as one of the lecturers who prepare the videos for our first year students. So at that time, there were three lecturers who were chosen and I was one of them. Uh, the reason why was perhaps you can guess because I was already quite um, active with uh, this, uh, but not through my channel. Before uh, 2000, maybe 14 or 15, uh, when I was teaching in front of the class, in front of the students, uh, the dean of the faculty sent a cameraman uh, to record to record my my yeah. lectures yeah and then and then uh, the videos were put in the faculty of math and science uh, channel which was part of uh, our university channel okay so uh there were like 92, 92 videos of calculus uh, uh, lectures that I was teaching. Uh, now, these videos that I produced during the pandemic uh, was different because, uh, the, of course, the calculus is the same, but uh, with this uh, full online um, interaction, the university uh, university wide uh, policy was to prepare videos like in 5 to 10 minutes so very short uh, short video for one topic so one chapter could be uh, 15 topics so i have to make 15 videos short uh, videos so i i was given like three chapters the other two also uh, three chapters something like that so i I made like 30 something videos, uh, five to 10 minutes. What is uh, derivative, for example, or uh, integral, um, definite integral, indefinite integral, and so on. So just one video, one, one topic. During that time, I, I learned about a camera. Uh, I have to have a good camera. I have to have a good mic, uh, headset. I have to. Uh, the, and the department didn't didn't buy me good ones. Uh, they didn't. Yep. They didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't uh, actually uh, give me uh, financial support to buy uh, one. So I I just finance myself. Yeah, I produce other videos then because I have tools. Yeah. Uh, the last one was Mad Chat, uh, and the reason for that was uh, because because I have cameras, I have bicycle. Sometimes I record uh, my trip with my bicycle. I put that on my YouTube channel. Also, <laughs> I, I from camera I was exposed to drones, uh, uh, so I bought I bought one drone two and then three and so on <laughs> so uh so uh the footage uh, the drone footage was for me uh, it's interesting so i put them also uh on my youtube channel although they don't they didn't really get um, much uh views uh, compared to my uh lectures uh, actually but i like them so i put mm -hmm. them but then I, I realized, well, if this happens, then uh, my channel was uh, dominated by my uh, own <laughs> footage. So I have, uh, I have to, to balance with my mathematical, uh, you know, video. So mm -hmm. because this time is a break, a semester break. So I, I started this uh, math chat series. Uh, to remember that I'm a mathematician, so <laughs> that's that's about uh, the the 
channel that I have. What's the viewership and sort of the uh, oh yeah the, the crowd yeah. of people um uh-huh. following the, uh-huh. following math chat especially. So I started with uh, like like uh, two hundred subscribers uh, yeah. of course at that time, but then uh, after I put more videos on my uh, lectures, so. Uh, I gain, I get more subscribers, so it mm. grow, it grew from 250s to 500, 600, and then mm. I was, I realized that if I got 1,000, then my channel could be monetized. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I got, uh, so I have targets, so I have targets, so, uh, and then I reach, I reach 1,000 subscribers, but. But then I learned something. So uh, getting 1K subscribers doesn't didn't automatically uh, uh, move to the next level, being monetized. So I have to I have to to have uh, 4,000 hours, something like that. Wow. I think 4,000 hours view. Yeah. So I have another target. Okay, at that time maybe, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe the hours was like uh, one thousand. So I have mm. to to get another three three thousand hours. Uh, okay, so I put more videos and uh, early this year perhaps I I reach uh, for for thousand hours so i so my channel is now monetized uh but uh to claim that i'm a youtuber maybe it's too early because uh, because my <laughs> earning my earning <laughs> i'm not very proud of it uh, uh, my earning is like is like uh five dollars a month <laughs> from my channel but of course that's not my 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 intention although yeah. it would be nice to 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 have yeah. a, a yeah. second thing from my channel but uh, yeah. i guess it uh, i i will i will need to wait for maybe several years yeah from now yeah, the maths chat is is actually quite fun. I participated mm-hmm. uh, a couple. Yeah, times. yeah, that yeah. that ones mm-hmm. that ones got more views than my drone footage. <laughs> <laughs> the discussions were really fun in uh, in in math chat, especially the one last week uh, that I participated. Um, we're recording uh-huh. this in 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 early early July. Um, yeah. Last week I participated, and you had a forum of of uh, let's say uh, various um key players in education mm-hmm. there is a student there's student, a teacher yeah teacher. and there are mm-hmm. two um uh, how should i put they they're they're teaching mathematics education yes um, yes and there is one from a, an um, organization uh sikim yeah yeah Kim, southeast yes, yeah. asia uh quality improvement in mathematics something like that yeah, so they're, they're training teachers uh, around Southeast yeah. Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that conversation, uh, the, the conversations uh, were really were really interesting and really productive. Uh, two hours were too short. I think we need another Two session. hours were, uh, was too short. Yeah, I, I felt that too. Yes, I felt yeah, that. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. And, and I, I thought the, um, just sort of from um, participating in two of them, and also I listened to uh, some of the previous episodes, um, you got quite a bit of um, teachers actually joining in um, mathematics mm-hmm. teachers joining mm-hmm. in the in the math mm. chat via yes. video or um, because this is basically a, zo- a zoom session that is streamed live so either mm-hmm. they um, on zoom or they're actually interacting on the YouTube channel on the live stream mm-hmm. itself and mm-hmm. um, I found it really really nice to hear perspective from 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 the teachers you gave a lot of um, training to teachers uh, uh, is this correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, yeah. Lo- uh, many years ago, especially, mm-hmm. but uh, now, like at least once or twice a year, I get invitation from uh, high schools or uh, junior or senior high schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got the invitation invitation to to give. Um, what do you call that uh, presentation? Uh, just just a talk, a, a talk, talk yeah. yeah, a mm-hmm. talk on on math teaching. 
on men yeah, teaching. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, your projects have reached children well, via anak bertanya, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. also reached the teachers now uh, via math chat. And um, yeah. yeah, I think this is great for our country. Uh, <laughs> to I hope so. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> to learn more about mathematics because I also yes. felt that um yeah when when I was when I was still studying there's this very little interest uh in in mathematics and to yes. to have yes. now weekly on your YouTube channel people talking about mathematics is really is really inspiring. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, yes. I hope I hope uh through this uh I called it the uh, series of of chats. Uh, it's also popular chats, so it's like yeah. the popular uh, math book. Mm. Uh, uh, mathematics get more ex- exposure, so yeah. that's yeah. the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so inspired by this conversation. <laughs> like well, I hope I hope this I hope this road not taken also get more audience and. <laughs> and it's not uh i mean it's the fourth one or maybe the fifth one and the, i the hope it, con- one, yes. <laughs> it, it it continues to to uh yeah forever i hope <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see how much energy we have <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes we 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 get uh stuck with ideas yeah. but uh i hope mm. it, when when it happens uh, that's because we we get another another idea. ideas <laughs> another idea so it's evolved it's yeah. evolving so yes uh, that what happens uh, with me w- with blogs now uh youtube channel mm. i have i have a facebook account instagram account twitter account so i'm active in in uh, social, social media. media not for just chatting or discussing uh, politics or maybe uh, current affairs mm-hmm. but but mainly to to promote my yeah. uh, not only mathematics now but also my view about education yes, my view yes, about yes. F- uh, modern life my view about the future mm-hmm. uh, which I thought would be important for the younger generation. Yes, now, this yes. is the voice of someone who's getting old. <laughs> 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 I need to, to make sure uh, that what I know, what I have learned mm. is, is uh, you know, continued by the younger generation and yes. uh, continued in a better way and uh, yeah. more, uh, you know, more productive and so on. Yeah, and so on. yeah, yeah. This is, I think, an, a great example of using social media in a very, yeah, a very yeah. positive way. Yeah. Mm. Yes. yeah. Maybe let's uh, wrap up with some final questions. Do you have any question, Rory, before I fire my final question? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> my final question would be, um, do you have any advice? So uh, we are basically putting this, um, video on our uh, UP Math YouTube channel, and um, at the moment, uh, our students are watching. Uh, our undergrad students, our postgrad students are watching um, the YouTube. I hope they're watching the YouTube channel. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, do you want to perhaps give uh, some advice for them studying uh, who are studying mathematics? Perhaps um, thinking yeah. about yeah, thinking about um, is this the right thing to do or um, uh, yes. Where can I go from the from 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 this point yes. and so on? Yeah, it's easy actually because because I have uh, had this uh, series of mad chats and yes. <laughs> some series some series discuss letters to a young mathematician by Ian Stewart. So my advice to uh, math students, especially, read this book. I mean, the messages uh, written already. In this mm-hmm. book, are very important, mm-hmm. very important, meaningful, and I think the messages will guide you to your mathematical journey in the future. If you are thinking uh, about doing math 
in your uh, years to come. I mean, mathematics is uh, beautiful, important, interesting, challenging, and so on. It's all described in this in this book. I couldn't write better. I couldn't give better messages than the messages already put in this book. Of course, now we are experiencing uh, like online learning and so on, but mathematics, I think, stay the same and you can learn mathematics uh, anywhere anytime and um, yeah just do math I mean if you are <laughs> if you are if you are into it so yeah yeah don't turn back, <laughs> don't turn back. <laughs> that is a great advice uh, don't turn back yeah, yeah I think okay. I think that's that's my message yeah great Bahendra thank you very much for joining us uh, for this wonderful it's discussion. a pleasure yeah it's and, wonderful uh, also. We are, uh, as Rory and I have said, very inspired. And I hope uh, the people who are watching this video will be inspired. And uh, yeah, we are Hopefully. wishing, yeah, <laughs> we're wishing that all your projects will uh, bear fruit and uh, do good oh, yes. things in uh, Indonesia for the education and mathematics. And uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you uh, again. Thank you for, for the yeah. opportunity. <laughs> and yeah, I hope we can see each other. Again. Yes. Yes. yes Have yes. another chat. Have another chat. <laughs> Have another yes. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all for the next episode. Bye. See you. Bye. Cheers.